Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Abbott's Address. Today is Monday, April 8th, 2019. And I'm uh, talking today about body practice, about practicing with the body. And um, in Ongo, which we're kind of in the second uh, third of, I guess you could say, we're in the second month of Ongo, this Ongo is really focusing on practice as the main topic. What is it to practice the Dharma? And I opened up the Ongo emphasizing creativity and the artistic process and how creativity, creativity is a gate into studying the Dharma. And then this month, I would like to turn attention to body practice. Now, I use that term. Uh, it's the term that my first teacher used. Here it is called The Eight Gates of Zen. That's Daido Roshi's uh, first book, uh, greatly contributed to and edited by Myotai Sensei, my first, my second teacher. So obviously, this, this is an important resource in my Dharma experience, and I recommend it. And one of the things that they did is they took um, and broke Dharma practice down into what they called the eight gates, and one of them was uh, body practice. And it's interesting because um, largely we can think that realizing the Dharma is an intellectual exercise, that it's something that we have to think our way through, that we have to um, grasp and understand cognitively. Um, and while <coughs> partially that's the case, um, it's also the case that it's something that we need to realize physically. And so, uh, you know, body practice actually uh, has to do with uh, brushing the teeth and washing the face. It has to do with living and with dying, with parenting, with nurturing. And to understand that that stuff itself is the body of the Buddha. That is the practice of the body of the Buddha. This is important. Now, to access that, it, it's actually really helpful, I think, to have a formal practice, some kind of a formal body practice, some kind of a formal way of engaging with this. For myself, I think most people know that my, my personal practice is Aikido. That's the traditional martial art that really fits my personality and, and worldview and stuff, and I, I definitely highly recommend that to those for whom it's relevant and if it's accessible to you. But not everybody has to do Aikido. There's, there's yoga, there's Tai Chi, there's Qigong, there's other kinds of martial art. Uh, and then there's not obviously Eastern identified it's formal Zen practice kind of uh, things, you know, running, working out, other things, flow, arts, uh, dance, all kinds of stuff, you know. But I, I do think that there, there is a value to actually practicing in a formal way some kind of a body practice that you can actually develop and study with a teacher because this gives us a, it's given me a very direct insight into the tradition that we come from. So um, to that end, uh, at the Dharma talk I gave last Sunday, I introduced some very simple Qigong exercises, and I'll put a link to them here somewhere, <laughs> and uh, maybe in the comments section or the notes to this broadcast or something. And at the very minimum, I would like to really encourage everybody, if it's applicable to your body, you know, I'm not a doctor, I, I can't make recommendations, all that kind of stuff, all disclaimers are in place here, you know, check with the doctor if it seems like you ought to. Um, but I would really like to strongly recommend that every, every participant in ONGO uh, take up these very simple 10 energy movements. Um, these are traditional Qigong exercises. They've been arranged by my physician, Dr. Liu, who's up in Ann Arbor. He is a fantastic healing llama and resource. I recommend him highly. But uh, particularly, this, this little set of Qigong movements is very, very accessible. It's very doable. And it's something that I started integrating into Sashin, uh, and it's been received very well. And um, so, you know, I do these 10 energy movements uh, daily. They're part of how I wake up. They're something that I do before I sit down to do Zazen and the daily liturgy and that kind of stuff. And so at a minimum, I, I would like people to try these and, and see how they work for you and use that as a baseline entry level. From there, if you um, took the month and made an effort to explore and research and investigate, different kinds of traditional body practice, 
Uh, look at the resources that are in your area, maybe the resources that are online, things, sources that can help you kind of discern the right way to, to engage with this and, and, and start taking it up, you know, take up some kind of a body practice as a way of realizing the Dharma, not simply as a way of losing some pounds or being more fit, although that's maybe good stuff, maybe not, you know, but that's probably good stuff, but not just as a way of doing that not just as a way of learning a martial art or being able to strike a yoga pose or what have you, but actually as a way of practicing the Dharma, as a way of realizing and expressing the truth of this Buddha Dharma that we share together. So again, my art is Aikido. It's one art amongst many, uh, but find one. Find something that resonates with you. Find some way of practicing working with the body. Ideally, in a formal tradition where there is a teaching and a teacher and a lineage that you can make progress in. Um, I think the traditional, the arts that are traditionally associated with uh, Zen and with Buddhism have something particular to offer. Again, the Qigong, Tai Chi, uh, Kung Fu, Bagua, uh, and the different uh, martial arts, uh, Okinawan Karate, uh, etc. You know, Aikido is my preference, but any of these will definitely add something to your understanding of how to practice uh, yoga, etc. Okay, so that's that's the big thing. That's the message for today. You know, consider if you haven't already, if you, if you are already engaged in a body practice as a way of developing your understanding and realization, thank you for doing that. And if you aren't, please investigate and, and think about, you know, given your body and your history and your health and all your conditions and so on, what does make sense, find some way in. And then I would like to recommend everybody does these um, 10 energy movement exercise Qigong practice from Dr. Liu that I'll link to here and uh, just take it up. And by the way, I talked with him about this directly. He's very excited to have me share uh, these, this information with the Sangha and it's all good that way. Okay, so um, that's it. Take up the body practice. And if you don't have a copy of the Eight Gates of Zen, I recommend it also. There's a chapter in here about body practice, the miracle of aliveness, Body practice is concerned with self-realization through the body. It is realizing that this body is the body of the Buddha, the body of the entire universe. There it is. Um, announcements. Uh, we have the teaching retreat that is starting tomorrow. Uh, it's a week-long teaching retreat, and uh, this is the result of our relationship with Gelug Rinpoche and the Galupa lineage of the Tibetan tradition wherein we uh, will be spelling out the cognitive framework for the Dharma, uh, kind of the other side of body practice, cognitive framework and intellectual understanding, also good. So it's modular. Uh, you can plug into any of the sessions. It's happening at the temple location. It's a commuter retreat, so there's a morning and an afternoon session. Uh, and please plug into as much of that as you can. Okay, thank you, Sangha. May your practice go well.